Labadiena, aš esu Aušraukų Kelkaitė, organizacijos Global Fainian Leaders vadovė. Ir šiandieną mes pradedame antrąjį Meet and Greet renginį su energetikos kompanija Ignitis Group. Šiandieną mes šnekėsime anglų kalbą. Pasakysiu kodėl, dėl to, kad norime būti, norime įtraukti žmonės diasporoje, kurie nekalba lietuviškai, tačiau domisi reikalais, kurie vyksta Lietuvoje. Taigi, nuo šitos akimirkos aš neku angliškai. Hello everybody, everyone who... Welcome to JLL Meet and Greet. I'm Osha Kukelkaita, the uh, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Global Ukrainian Leaders Organization. Uh, this uh, meet and greet event is part of uh, JLL Talent Reach Programming, uh, which is meant to connect uh, Lithuanian leading companies with the professional, uh, Lithuanian professional diaspora abroad, all over the world, uh, so that they can meet eye to eye and uh, and uh, discuss and and meet each other and understand each other better the needs of diaspora if they are considering uh, coming back to Lithuania and also the what the what the Lithuanian companies are looking for and what they are in general uh, so this event uh, meet and greet event is the second in the series uh, we already had one event uh, with the uh, unicorn uh, vinted uh, today we are meeting with Ignitus Group, and uh, and uh, on November 12th we will be meeting with the with Luminor Bank. So I would like to present uh, uh, to our today's panelists. Uh, I will start with our moderator first, uh, who is uh, Gintara uh, Budrunite. She is the uh, uh, Chair of the board in uh, Lithuanian uh, London City Club. And this is a Lithuanian uh, club of professionals in London City. Uh, uh, and we also, I would like to greet uh, uh, two, our two panelists from uh, Ignitus Group. Uh, I will start with Diana, who is, um, uh, who is uh, uh, head, of, uh, uh, head of Poland region of Ignitus Group. Hello, Diana. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, Darius Mekštienas, who is the CEO and chair of the board at Tignitis Group. Hi, good uh, evening. Good evening. So I would like to encourage everyone to use this opportunity that you are, meet, uh, you are connecting live and uh, uh, ask questions in, in a Q&A uh, 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 box which is uh, w that you can see in the uh, tool toolbar below the uh, in in the lower toolbar uh, because uh, please do not ask questions in the chat box because this chat box is is, is not uh, monitored we will be uh, moderating only questions we will be seeing only the questions that you will uh, put into q a box so i think this is that much from me, and now I'm transferring my uh, the word to Gintara. Thank you very much, Osher, and thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to actually meet uh, Ignitis Group and the, its leaders. Um, what a year are we having? Uh, it's actually truly unprecedented year for everybody around the world with Corona events, as well as for us in London here and in England with the Brexit events, with more and more Lithuanians, professional Lithuanians returning back to their homeland. And of course, with this return, we're all looking for opportunities at home. And uh, this opportunity to speak with Ignitis, which is uh, an incredible company, it's, it's a great opportunity to know what we actually have in our region. Um, I would like to maybe shortly introduce uh, Ignitis. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows uh, Ignitis Group and heard about it uh, over the last couple of months with its IPO process. Um, but really, um, by revenue, Ignitis is the largest group of energy companies in Baltic states with consolidated revenue of 1.25 billion euros last year. It employs over 4,000 people and it operates in Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Finland. Ignitis gr uh, group uh, gives opportun uh, opportunity um, uh, to green... Uh, it, Ignitis group is really... Um, 
aiming um, to transform itself uh, over the next uh, upcoming years. Um, and uh, really this year uh, has been truly extra, extraordinary for it as it has announced its commitment to reduce, uh, to reduce net uh, CO2 emissions to zero by 2050 and align its business goals with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, as well as uh, it has gone through the IPO process. So all of this really um, causes a huge transformation internally and tr transformation means change and change means opportunity. So with no further ado, um, I would like to uh, introduce Darius Mekstianas and just before that is you step in, maybe I'll give some um, rules of the house and how we will lead this, uh, this session. So we will start with Darius for 20 minutes, after which we will follow with a 10 minute Q&A. And then we will have an opportunity to speak with uh, Diana about her experience with Ignitis Group and what uh, opportunities for um, uh, people entering the Ignitis there are within the group. Uh, also we'll follow with Q&A and we will wrap it up with a, um, uh, any uh, comments that anybody has to share or any final questions that we have for the panelists today. And so uh, with that, um, that is, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gintara. After such introduction, probably I can skip my presentation and go straightly to Q&A. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, of course, um, I have some slides. Uh, um, some of them are copies from our recent strategy and our presentations, which we uh, we were making um, um, about a hundred times during the IPO process. Um, so, just short version and some key facts. I, I I will be glad to share with you, as well as uh, what we managed uh, during our IPO and how it looked like, because it's really quite. Uh, quite an adventure, I would say, um, uh, uh, to participate in that. So, um, um, starting with the Ignitus Group, you, 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 here you see some pictures of, of our energy assets. We are uh, leading um, utility across Baltic states and leading uh, green energy player in the region. and. Um, uh, and actually, our uh, transformation when we when we really approached the IPO, we before that we made quite a lot of uh, um, restructuring and preparation of new strategy and aligning the operations before we got really ready uh, to to make a, a largest in history IPO across the Baltic states in the region. So, uh, um, if, if to look uh, business-wise, how uh, business uh, um, of Ignitus Group um, um, is for today, um, um, we, we are organized across four uh, main segments, uh, networks, green generation, flexible generation, as well as customers and solutions. Uh, last year, uh, um, business uh, altogether of those four segments generated uh, around 260 million euros in EBITDA. And from the, um, uh, from the picture, you can see that uh, two main business lines for Ignitus Group um, are networks and um, green generation. Those two segments uh, um, contributing um, close or sometimes even over 90% of, uh, of total um, a contribution to the EBITDA. Currently, the largest uh, um, uh, business uh, uh, in the group is our networks business. It's a, um, a national-wide electricity and natural gas distribution networks. Uh, the second one is uh, green generation. Um, uh, and this, this one is most growing uh, part of our business. Uh, for sure, it's a, um, for us, it's a, a growth engine. Currently, um, and I will talk uh, a bit more about our current development plans and um, and and how we and how we are um, addressing uh, this renewable market. Uh, the third one, flexible generation. Those are um, uh, fire gas, uh, fire um, uh, gas fired uh, uh, units in Electrene. Um, um, uh, some electricity generation from natural gas. 
but those units are mainly used for uh, so-called ancillary services, uh, uh, system reserve services for the system operator. Um, um, in ordinary words, they are just standing still um, uh, and uh, enter the system when uh, there is a shortage of uh, electricity in Lithuania and in the region. Um, and for that um, um, uh, um, capacity, we, we, we got uh, a remuneration from uh, uh, from um, from uh, uh, system operator and regulator, and the fourth one, um, customers and solutions. While being small as EBITDA wise, only four percent contribution to the EBITDA. This is some um, largest amount of uh, retail customers across uh, mainly in Lithuania, but also across the Baltic states and and uh, in natural gas. We have some customers in Finland. For us, it's also really strategically important, especially on the on the electricity side, because while maintaining and growing customer base, uh, we can match it with our growing green generation uh, business, and therefore uh, getting natural hedge advantage. Um, uh, we are very sustainable uh, um, uh, business uh, since we do not have any exposure to coal and nuclear. And you can see from, uh, from the uh, chart as well that last year, it was the record year of, um, of the amount of green generation in our generation mix. Uh, only 2% of all electricity produced by Ignatius Group was uh, from natural gas. The rest uh, uh, was uh, from renewable sources. This year, we will have a bit uh, bigger part of uh, conventional generation due to the very specific situation uh, on the natural gas market and also uh, the need of the country to, uh, to, to fill in um, a natural generation a mix with more local, locally uh, produced um, electricity. Um, as um, as Gintare mentioned, we are, we are uh, operating across uh, Baltic states as well as uh, in Finland and Poland. Um, uh, it, our network business is and will remain only in Lithuania, while uh, uh, customers and solutions we are operating across all the region. Um, in Finland, we, uh, we are currently present only in natural gas market, while in Poland and Baltic states, we are addressing uh, uh, all the mix, natural gas, electricity, and uh, for renewables, our core market are uh, Baltic states and Poland. And especially in Poland, uh, for us, it's becoming a strategically important market because it's much bigger comparing to Lithuania. And um, there is a huge need of um, um, development of additional green generation um, uh, uh, capacities uh, in this country. And we are very uniquely positioned to address those needs because we are targeting some um, mid-range pro uh, projects between 50 and 100 megawatts of renewable capacity and therefore do not see big competition from large international and Polish utilities. Um, um, if talking about our strategy, uh, which we announced uh, uh, early this year, um, uh, at the core of the strategy is sustainability and, and ESG's principles. As I said, we do not have exposure to coal and nuclear. We've made our commitment to become um, a carbon neutral. And in all operations, we are putting, um, uh, especially on the uh, mid and long term targets, we are putting ESG first. Um, and uh, that journey started much before we uh, contemplated and we entered uh, IPO um, a market. And, and right now, we see that our focus to the green generation, green agenda, and very strong corporate governance pays off uh, since we are um, uh, right now gaining from a huge interest of ESG-focused uh, um, international um, uh, investors. And in, in our strategy, while putting sustainability at the core, we are focusing our activities in three areas. First one is mainly to ensure and enable uh, ensure resiliency and stability of our regional um, um, energy system. 
while also enabling um, uh, transition and evolution to new generation of, um, of energy um, uh, infrastructure and ecosystem of, of many players uh, in Lithuania as well as across the Baltic states and in Poland. Uh, the second part of, of our activities is a huge amount of investments into green generation. Roughly, we are planning to invest uh, over the next 10 years um, uh, um, uh, around 3 billion euros in, in the green generation um, until uh, until uh, 2023, first billion will be spent uh, um, uh, investing in, in green generation capacities. And the third one, we really, uh, uh, since, since entire industry of energy is in transformation and country science transformation, we are looking at and, and seizing some new emerging opportunities, would it be in new markets or in new services uh, like emerging solar parks and, and so on. And as I uh, was saying before, entering IPO, uh, the, the company went through the huge transformation, and this transformation is continuing. And this, and 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 and, um, and um, we have uh, um, transi free transitions, free transformation happening in parallel. First of all, we are migrating from conventional energy to renewables, and this is. Uh, almost already done, and right now we are we are creating new capacities. Also, uh, the history of Ignitis Group, formerly to was Energia, was state-owned, uh, um, monopolistic, um, uh, large player, which is um, um, kind of uh, stagnant and and and. Uh, uh, old school of, of type of uh, business that was maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Currently, especially on the green generation, customers and solutions and other parts of the company, it's really becoming very competitive, very innovative um, business, um, uh, one of the leading uh, businesses across the Baltic region for, for sure. And the third transition was to expand our reach from being only local into really a leading regional player. Um, since we are addressing much bigger market com comparing to Lithuania, we have much bigger uh, potential for, for future growth. Um, and um, um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the, the, the largest part of our investments and our focus is on green generation. And, and, um, and this is a slide from our roadshow. Investors, uh, 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 they, they are very curious. Okay, you you are saying uh, that you will invest about one billion until 2023, three billion until uh, 2030, uh, four gigawatts of um, uh, uh, renewable capacity. How you you will get there? So so here is a um, illustration of our current pipeline uh, of um, of. Um, um, of the current projects. Uh, currently, we have um, um, around one gigawatt uh, of capacity uh, already uh, um, in place and operations. And, uh, and you can see um, two wind parks um, currently are in, um, in um, construction. One uh, uh, is Pomerania wind park in, in Poland, actually one of the largest uh, wind parks uh, currently um, uh, in development in this country. The second is um, in Majeke. Uh, we just launched uh, uh, last August um, um, together with Fortum uh, Finnish utility in Kaunas uh, uh, CHP uh, cogeneration plant, uh, which is uh, producing energy from waste. Uh, we are, we are um, right now building uh, um, uh, another uh, cogeneration based on energy and biomass uh, um, CHP in Vilnius. Um, uh, on top of that, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we are entering Poland not only with our wind project, but also we have um, quite a big amount of um, uh, projects uh, or uh, alloy signed or already um, uh, SPA signed with the developers to develop uh, solar large-scale solar parks in, in Poland. 
Um, and um, on top of that, we are working with uh, uh, projects of different stages um, uh, across all three Baltic states and in Poland of about amount of one gig gigawatt uh, of uh, projects of different stages. So that will, will uh, help us to reach uh, about 1.6, 1.8 gigawatts by 2030. Um, and beyond that, uh, we foresee um, um, uh, offshore wind development in Baltic Sea. Actually, Baltic Sea has a very good conditions uh, to develop offshore wind uh, due to the um, uh, quite convenient um, uh, um, uh, uh, sea environment and, and uh, quite strong wind, wind conditions. So uh, we are planning to participate in, um, in offshore wind uh, uh, tender in 2023 to go the leading um, global uh, offshore wind development, offshore winds, which is a joint venture of um, um, uh, of NG and um, EDPR. On top of that, we are, we are already um, uh, 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 signed uh, some alloys with Lithuanian developers to, uh, to develop additional wind parks in Lithuania onshore and um, Kruanis hydro pump storage plant, which is quite unique um, asset uh, in this part of Europe. Uh, uh, we see the po possibility to expand it and that will contribute very, very, uh, very efficiently to the overall uh, green generation mix. Since when we are implementing more and more renewables into the grid, um, uh, there is a much uh, higher volatility of prices and peaks of peaks um, in the system. And, and here, um, a pump storage plant working as the large, huge battery um, uh, of storing um, electricity uh, um, uh, has its uh, business case um, to contribute to overall uh, ecosystem. And on top of that, uh, um, we see that we, we will be able, we will need to develop additional 1, 1 1.4, 1.5 gigawatts of uh, renewable capacities. To those who um, who know Lithuania and knows, um, uh, I, I was talking a, a lot about gigawatts and, and to those who do not understand um, uh, how big it is, uh, in comparison, um, I, can, I can make a, an example of uh, uh, Kona's um, uh, hydro uh, plant. Uh, um, probably all Lithuanians know uh, um, this. Um, this unit, um, um, the, 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 the size of it and capacity of it, it is uh, uh, 100 megawatts. So this means that over the strategic period until 2030, since we are building about three gigawatts of new, cap of new generation capacity, so basically we are building 30 Kona's uh, hydro uh, uh, hydro plants um, uh, megawatts wise. So it's a really huge investment, huge development uh, for the country, for entire region, and and for the group uh, as well. Um, uh, and now a few words about uh, IPO. Um, uh, we started the journey exactly about a year ago when we um, realized that this is the time to make an IPO because we, we, we had the need to finance uh, our investment uh, plan, our strategy uh, to develop uh, um, um, uh, green generation capacities to modernize our distribution networks, uh, do uh, digitalization, etc. And for that, we needed to uh, strengthen our capital base uh, uh, because we, we already reached the limits of, uh, of the leverage, which we are efficient. And beyond that, we, we were risking to, um, to, to lose our credit rating. Therefore, we we um, we uh, agreed with the with the state with the government that uh, okay let's let's discuss the possibility to to strengthen the capital base, and there was the decision 
um, uh, made that uh, IPO is the most efficient way uh, uh, to, to, to strengthen the capital base. Um, uh, uh, so then we, we, we had about six months of preparation and all that preparation uh, uh, went uh, uh, just during the peak of COVID crisis of first wave and we just catched the, the very early beginning of the second wave during the IPO. So, so uh, it, it's very interesting journey because we started a year ago not realizing uh, how all these um, uh, um, financial markets will be shaken during all that period. Uh, so, so we did our job very well and all the time we were monitoring, okay, is it the right time to, to enter the market? Will be, uh, we, uh, 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 is the window opportunity um, to, to make uh, such size of IPO? Um, um, just few facts, um, um, uh, what we managed to achieve. So the deal size was uh, 450 million euros. Um, actually, uh, um, um, in this region across the Baltic states, um, it's by far the largest IPO ever. And, and we needed such amount of uh, money, such amount of size, because we, we had to, we had to, um, to be rational and to, to, to reach our 2030 targets. And, uh, and this IPO is helping us to finance entire, um, um, entire strategic period combined with the leverage. Um, and also the, si the, the decent size of IPO was needed to really to attract uh, uh, large international investors and, and those uh, large funds uh, uh, managing uh, trillions, hundreds of billions and, um, um, of assets, they need a um, certain amount of uh, liquidity. Uh, and therefore, uh, it was clear that we have to aim something between 400 and 500 uh, a million uh, of uh, free float size uh, to, to be attractive uh, for, for such players. And for us, the entire exercise was um, uh, to sell uh, uh, our equity story um, and, and to show how, how is business organized and what is our pipeline, what is our, um, uh, our business plan and corporate governance and regulatory framework, but also Lithuania and the Baltic states for many of those we are quite terra incognita, so to say. So we were uh, pioneers opening, uh, opening the region for 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 those um, for those funds, um, so size 450. We uh, date of listing was 7th of October. Uh, we closed uh, uh, book, books and, and book allocation one day before um, U.S. President got a positive COVID uh, test. So so uh, so. You can imagine that about a year of preparation and we finished just exactly on time when the, the, the window of opportunity to go with IPOs was starting to close. We had um, unprecedented uh, uh, syndicate in this region. Uh, uh, global joint coordinators uh, were uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, UBS, uh, um, as well as Swedbank uh, together with Kepler and Chevro. And as book runner, we had also uh, Bank of America. Um, uh, we managed to, um, uh, to attract very uh, cool, very high high quality uh, mix of uh, investors. About two thirds of those are long only, so called low, long only. Most of those are ESG focused um, uh, funds. Um, uh, about um, uh, nine percent was uh, retail. We had retail across three Baltic states: and Lithuania, Latvia, and and Estonia. And, uh, and about one third was a hedge funds. Um, in, um, um, uh, uh, if, if to talk a bit about retail uh, participation, 
Uh, close to 80% was, of course, Lithuania. Uh, Estonia, uh, IPO-wise, they, they are a bit more advanced and active market comparing to Latvia. So Estonia contributed uh, close to uh, 19% of, um, of retail base and Latvia was uh, around 3%. Uh, Geography-wise, um, uh, Baltics and, 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 and Nordic uh, funds uh, um, amounted close to the one, of the one half of, uh, of entire, um, um, entire um, uh, amount of money, one-third UK, and the rest is US and, and, and other countries. So uh, after, after um, the IPO, um, free float size is 26.99%. Uh, and since we did everything on Zoom, uh, um, uh, starting from early look meetings to the pilot fishing analyst today, as well as all the roadshow was made in, in this room uh, uh, in front of, um, of, um, of the screen and cameras. Uh, together management, we had uh, more than 100 meetings uh, uh, presenting our equity story to investors. Um, uh, uh, we had also so-called analyst day, which is um, independent analyst from uh, syndicate uh, from bank syndicate. Uh, uh, five of those, we they, we had a quite deep dive session on on all our uh, business lines, and after that, they made. Uh, 400 meetings with, with, uh, with uh, investor base. Again, everything in Zoom. Uh, to, to understand the, the size of preparation inside the company, around 100 uh, people were involved in, in preparation of different uh, issues related to IPO and documentation uh, and other things. Only prospectus is uh, 600, more than 600 pages uh, big. Um, and, and a lot of uh, other things we are done in, in record short time, so to say, uh, because we were aiming uh, just post summer, because for us it was clear that uh, then autumn is approaching Europe uh, due to the COVID uh, and, and uh, and uh, US elections um, coming uh, soon, we will see much higher volatility in the markets and IPO markets uh, will close. So, um, so, so we've done it. It's, it was really exciting and, 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 and outstanding. And right now we have a very strong capital base. We have uh, outstanding credit, credit rating, uh, cheapest um, uh, financing uh, cost uh, across uh, Baltic states and Poland, very strong comp competitive advantage to develop new services, new innovations, um, new projects. And since we are entering, uh, we are building uh, uh, quite new business in some extent, especially on the renewable side. We are constantly looking for, for talents, in Lithuania and uh, in, uh, across the entire world. So, uh, so therefore, we, I'm really glad that, that we, we had the opportunity to, to meet you and to talk with you again. If you will be interested to, 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 to be in touch with us, the, the best uh, way to do it is to go to our uh, corporate site, ignitisgruppe.lt. Uh, there are different sections of um, news items as well as career section where you can um, um, even subscribe about the news about new positionings opening and uh, continuously to, to, to stay in touch with us. Um, with that, I will close the PowerPoint and um, ready to answer to your questions. Labai ačiū, Dario. Uh, thank you so much. That that is uh, I switched to Lithuanian for some reason. The Lithuanian audience, Lithuanian language, but such an impressive geographic and infrastructure ex expansion plans. Thank you so much for sharing it. And uh, what a year to do an IPO! I think we'll remember this for many many years to come. You um, led the group uh, exceptionally well, and the achievement is is incredible. So. 
we have uh, quite a few questions from the audience and really interesting questions as well. Our audience uh, today, um, although not very large, but uh, the video is going to reach uh, many, many uh, people outside of this, uh, the, this webinar. So we have USA, Netherlands, UK, Germany, France, Belgium, and people from Lithuania as well. So um, really diverse audience out here. And maybe we'll start with the first question from Mantas. Uh, Bernatas. Mantas Bernatas is from Copenhagen uh, and his question is how do you manage the cultural and digital change from the state-owned company to more privately owned one and um, definitely more modern one. What were the main challenges you faced? Um, A lot of challenges. On the other hand, uh, this this group, this company, already had very huge potential inside. So when when new new board started, uh, myself, I I spent all my career in in ICT and telecommunications, um, uh, seeing um, seeing uh, different industries uh, and. Uh, and um, and when we when we got the new board uh, um, and an executive team, uh, there was some insiders uh, working with uh, with the company for the longer time, but also we had uh, quite a quite a lot of external competencies uh, from the top, <laughs> starting from the top, um, uh, which uh, uh, helped us quite a lot because sometimes it's good not to be too big pro professional in very narrow area. And, and on the on other hand, uh, um, the banking sector and telecommunication sector, all these uh, large infrastructure companies, they have a lot of similarities actually um, in, 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 um, in, um, in issues uh, or uh, what we are facing on. And for us, it was a uh, first job was uh, uh, we, we, we have to be frank, we changed uh, um, almost all CEOs of main business units. Um, 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 uh, Networks has a new, new CEO, uh, uh, renewables new, flexible new, uh, customers and solutions also new. Some are from energy sector, some are from uh, other sectors as well. Um, uh, there was a huge drive to update the strategy. So in 2018, there was a huge, huge, huge job done when we um, really um, 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 uh, set cornerstones of our new strategy until 2030, and go and got all the permissions and all all support from different stakeholders. Um, uh, that okay, it's fine to invest across the region, not only in Lithuania. It's fine to create uh, create uh, new 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 business units. It's fine to invest billions um, into business areas where you, you don't have any um, monopoly or any preference uh, comparing to to other um, uh, players. And what we learned learned that those opportunities really uh, uh, made a kind of internal drive for the entire company. Some people, uh, some people left, but we got quite a lot of new people from, 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 from very different areas. And um, I, I was amazed how um, the typical um, um, reflection uh, after, after meeting us and, 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 and of newcomers was that I was never imagined when, when I was going to the state-owned company, I was thinking that I will face like a ministry or, or something like that, like, like bureaucratical type of uh, um, um, enterprise. And and I, I and I entered and I learned that it's probably one of the more most modern companies in very in very dimensions in Lithuania of uh, across all these biggest enterprises. So for a lot of kind of uh, cultural shock for newcomers wa uh, was uh, as well. Um, it, 
But uh, the, I would say the level of ambition and level of empowerment what what company got and different business unit units got helped a lot of uh, um, in 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 this transformation actually and empowerment of people of course. That's fantastic to hear. We have um, another question, which uh, is certainly interesting for me as well, being a female. Uh, what is the current gender balance at the board and senior management level? Do you have gender um, uh, gender equality policy? So um, yes, we do, uh, and we and we would like to be better and better. And um, uh, and again, uh, uh, how how does it work? It's be the best it works from the top. So currently, uh, uh, we have supervisory board of seven, seven members. Four of them, uh, three are men, and, and four are women. So, so already, already golden standard uh, um, uh, on the top. Uh, management board uh, uh, st still a room for improvement. Uh, uh, four uh, four men and one woman, but 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 uh, but uh, but the trend you you can you can see the the, the clear trend. Um, uh, ahead of Poland, Diana will will, will tell us more, uh, and we will see more and more uh, leadership. Uh, uh, um, uh, which is not only males only, white males only, and so. We'll take one more question and then we'll leave um, the other questions for a later section, uh, just to actually leave enough time for Diana's uh, presentation. So this question is from Angela Sinitskas. Uh, she is a GLL patron uh, from the USA. And her question is, to what extent does this local uh, produced energy reduce the Baltic's reliance on Russian oil and gas? Mm -hmm. So uh, in our operations, we don't use oil and coal and nuclear, so only natural gas. Um, and natural gas, currently we have um, two sources of natural gas. One is uh, still we, we, we have pipeline supply from Gazprom from Russia. But we have also LNG terminal and um, uh, and um, LNG supply, which is uh, sourced uh, mainly from uh, Norway. We we have some uh, United States uh, states originated uh, uh, cargos as well. So currently, the local consumption uh, of natural gas and Lefay in our group is. For Lithuania, it's about 50-50. So we diversify our portfolio, uh, and and we are for kind of optimizing the cost uh, cost of the supply. The longer term, uh, my big dream is to get rid of natural gas uh, completely, since we made our commitment to become carbon neutral uh, by uh, 2050. Sometimes people saying, okay. How come how you how you can get rid of how you can become carbon neutral while you still have um, um, uh, natural gas uh, distribution networks and some uh, natural gas um, fired units? Um, it will take time, but I'm really believer in uh, hydrogen development, uh, green green hydrogen development. It will take time, um, uh, probably the same time uh, how it was, how it, how long it took, uh, for example, for solar generation to develop. But uh, clearly, um, in the future, um, most probably um, some green uh, uh, green uh, uh, gas production, hydrogen production, um, will replace natural gas. And therefore, the uh, Baltic states and, and Europe uh, will have uh, self-reliance uh, um, uh, across the entire energy, uh, energy mix. Thank you so much, Darius. This was a, a really interesting session. And uh, we will leave some time uh, for other questions, which are really interesting as well uh, and still are pending here uh, for our last uh, session of Q&A. And uh, I would like to actually bring in uh, Diana, uh, who is uh, a head of region of Poland uh, for Ignitis Group. 
And uh, Diana has a very interesting personal journey with Ignitis and also uh, as a female re re leader of the region, uh, can also talk about uh, uh, what it takes to actually to get into Ignitis group and what talent they're looking for. So with no further ado, Diana, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I'm actually very happy to be here today and doing this presentation due to also personal very reason. I'm a member of uh, GLO. I'm a managerial expat for years. So this is something very dear to me to speak about this. And today, Diary shared our vision, our success stories, where we are today and what are our plans. But I wanna take you on a journey more personal one. What is it, what it is? to be firsthand in the car that we're doing this journey, what it looks from inside of organization and share about some personal story as well. We have a saying in the group that energy is us. We say that because we tend to create opportunities, we tend to create challenges for ourselves, we drive transformation in energy in the whole reason. And this is done only to facilitate the sustainable future in energy markets where we are. We truly believe in that. And that is done by 4,000 professionals in Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, and Poland, uh, who have more than 75 different professions. And to talk about career, I also really like to talk about numbers. Just this year, we have more than 60 internal career cases. So this is shows how we do things, that we rely on our teams, we rely on the people, on the growth eternal as well. This change and everything that is done is about it in our values. We take responsibility to care about everything that we do. We are open to share our experience and to facilitate changes. Certain projects, uh, for example, probably you've heard of Community Solar Project, the project that enabled everyone in Lithuania, no matter where do you live, in a household or an apartment building, be the owner of solar power plant, and that bridging the gap between renewable energy developers who build and invest in such parks, and as well for the users of electricity to do that. We also believe that we are stronger together and that's why we believe in partnership that we do, in partnership in the customer solutions, in partnership with other utilities, uh, regulators and the market itself. And then probably for the topic today that I'm speaking to be a part of Ignitis Growth, it's very important for us the growth. We are growing by being bold and curious. And I probably, everyone would agree to say that APO process, as Darius elaborated on it, no one probably thought one year or two years ago that something like that would be even possible from small country Lithuania and some company that was not on the, let's say, map of European Union biggest companies or fast growing companies. So this shows our dedication to our goals and how we challenge that. We are very proud of that. And the growth, the answer is internal growth and the team that grows together with it. Well, I believe that actions speak louder than words. So I have my own uh, experience to share, which is a bit unusual, I would say, because eight years ago, when I came to Igidita's group, I had determination that I will stay here for a year. Because eight years ago, uh, Ignitis at the time that was Energia, as Darius mentioned, was completely different company with completely different culture, but actually started to change. And what uh, kept me there, kept me there for years, for eight years and still going, is this drive for change, drive for the future, for the green future, for the transparency, and especially for the sustainability of the future. So uh, my short story is in, I would say, five bullet points, eight years and counting. Within that year, eight years, I changed six companies within the group uh, in four different positions, from lawyer to chair of the board, uh, chair of supervisory board of Polish companies and head of region currently. 
we've done free spin-offs of our business within the group, uh, within the generation of electricity optimization as a solution, the merging and everything. So huge transformation for that. And I'm personally actually been working within the group within three countries, uh, Lithuania naturally, home country and home in all matters, uh, Latvia, and right now I'm in Warsaw in Poland. So for me personally, because I was asked to share my personal view, the ability to work and create in Ignitas, which is ultimately the beneficial ultimate is Lithuanian state, but to create business and values outside in societies in Latvia and Poland, well, this is something incredible and huge motivation to do that, even if it's not that easy sometimes. And that uh, not easy uh, part, which is very, very interesting and challenging, uh, started, I would say, in 2016, end of 2016, when the first idea to look into Poland was, was on the table, let's say. That idea led that in 2017, we established the company here, first our Polish company, which started very small activity, commodity trading on Polish market. It was only three employees, and we decided to start with that to look. In 2018, I would call a year that was a crucial year for the growth of the group. Uh, with the new strategy, with the management board, with the plans to change the whole structure of the group, this gave a lot of uh, power and determination to also grow outside of Lithuania. And that's why we started our activities on NASDAQ financial OMX commodities market with financial trading. In 2019, already mentioned by Darius Pomerania, wind farm project was acquired that is currently in the last stage of construction. And it's one of the biggest such type of projects in Poland in beautiful place, just 50 kilometers from Gdańsk uh, Baltic Sea shore and will power uh, more thousands of uh, households with green energy in Poland, which is right now a quite big topic and quite big challenge as Poland enters, starts its transformation. What we did two, three years ago in Lithuania right now is starting to become in Poland. So we are here to also share our experience and share our road with colleagues here. And this year we're growing further. So we have started new activity. Right now in Poland, we have 20 employees. And although it's not a big number in terms of team, but that team is truly amazing and truly international. We have uh, people who worked in South America, who worked in the United States, who worked in Australia and all over the Europe. So our team here is very much international and very dedicated to bringing the green sustainable future for the uh, for the shareholder, which is Ignitis Group. Also, we should mention that this year we're also entering in PV, uh, sun investments, sun solar parks, so called, and we will we'll be owning uh, around 170 megawatts of solar parks in Poland also, that would also grow our portfolio here. And our business, uh, as I mentioned already, right now in Poland, as it is very similar in other countries, it relies on uh, free legs, I would call, so renewable energy projects, natural electricity, air, gas, financial, and physical trading, as well as power and gas supply for the clients. And answering the question, what it takes to be uh, Ignitis group employee, no matter in which country, because we are all one group and we are working on the same values under the same strategy. I would say uh, we are building green, sustainable energy smart world for the future. And this is possible only with the team that we have, the team that shares our vision, that shares our attitude and is brave enough to take the challenge 
and especially to have the internal drive for it because we're driven internally to, to make this change. And I would say certain competences, even what Darius mentioned, deep knowledge of energy, of course it helps, but it's not crucial. Uh, my personal understanding and belief is that success stories are created by personal abilities and determination to do that. And if you have both, you can make success story, even if you don't have expertise in energy or you don't know, for example, Polish language and you want to work with us in Poland. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diana. This was uh, really um, an interesting um, session and thank you for sharing your personal journey with Ignitis because it's really um, impressive. Uh, eight years and so many changes in your positions um, and also giving us uh, an idea of all the transformations that are happening within Ignitis uh, group um, that provide the opportunities for everybody to within the group probably to show off uh, themselves and uh, excel in what they do. So I think it's certainly attractive for anybody here in the room and uh, we have uh, still a number of questions left and uh, we'll use probably the remaining time for uh, questions and answers really and uh, see what the audience uh, comes up again with. But uh, Thank you so much and uh, it was very, very interesting. So we will take um, one of the questions from uh, Paulus Urbanas. Paulus Urbanas is from UK and he works for, uh, as, an investment, uh, as an investment banker uh, in Barclays. Um, and his question is, um, many thanks for your presentation, Darius. Could you please elaborate on your experience of educating investors about Lithuania through the IPO process? How receptive were they to the message of Ignitis uh, being a Nordic versus CEE business and to Lithuania as an investment destination? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. A really good question because, as I said, uh, uh, there was to, the job was to sell equity story and then to sell the region and the country. Um, maybe. Uh, um, uh, um, what worked uh, uh, for the for particular set, what, what, what we were addressing um, uh, was that um, actually um, um, the, the level of corporate governance of Ignitis Group, because we are largest state-owned enterprise, and, the, and if to look at the uh, very specific elements of corporate governance and um, and the level of management systems and, and, and the business plan and preparation, already investors are seeing, okay, it's a quite a different uh, uh, conversation we have comparing to, I don't know, Polish CEO or, or Czech CEO uh, sitting in, in, in front of you from, from state-owned companies. Um, th then uh, um, uh, the, the deal, breaker, uh, deal breaker was when we were explaining much more about our regulatory framework uh, and, and how, how independent structures of, of, of and, and separation of policy setting regulatory and the ownership of, of energy assets are done in Lithuania for quite a long time. Um, and, and, and then, uh, and then um, um, uh, sometimes um, just uh, kind of re reasonable arguments. Usually um, uh, people are starting to think more and more about south and north. And, 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 and you will see more and more uh, divide across e e Europe, not uh, east and west, but more so south and north, because it's a different uh, kind of uh, um, a bit of values, a bit of speed of development, a, a bit of um, uh, cu cultural attitudes, uh, and and that and that was helping uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, promoting that region. We are not uh, Nordic countries. We are of course Baltic countries, but Baltic countries are in north. So so we are we are we are kind of emerging Nordics or or new Nordics. Type of uh, type of region, uh, and the business uh, business uh, shows and speaks uh, for themselves. Actually, thank you so much, Darius. Um, we have a question also for Diana, which came uh, straight to me. 
And it really uh, goes back to the gender balance in companies, such companies, right? I've uh, spent a decade working for an engineering company myself, and you are here in energy, a business which mm -hmm. I'm sure is really highly male dominated. Yes. So maybe, uh, Diana, you could first comment a little bit about that for us. And uh, then if that is you have something else to add, then that would be fantastic. Okay, about gender balance working in energy and how it is in Ignitis Group. Well, as uh, Gitari already mentioned, energy is traditionally, it's changing and it's changing very fast, but it's still traditionally perceived as more technical uh, skills, uh, technical competences and technical professions. So it's always, you know, uh, I've been a mentor to a couple of females, even within a group and outside of group, uh, who wants to have a career in management. And I always start with saying that it's always is a duo. It's not a solo dance. It's always is a duo. And uh, there should be opportunities from the company side, but there are also sh should be I would say encouragement and showing will to take off certain position and certain responsibility from the females as well. Uh, and I would say probably from my own experience uh, that uh, in our group it works. Uh, some time ago, uh, being quite young lawyer, I said it out loud to the management of the group that I want to take more responsibilities and I want to try. And I did not got answer that you are not okay for us. I got an answer, okay, let's do that. Let's try this. If that succeeds, we can see. And I think this is as in everything that actually happens with the cultural changes because it's cultural change, it's organizational change. It's not that we're just changing, you know, the form of our letterhead, for example. It takes time, but the most important is communication. Communication that we are open to that. And uh, well, I've in Poland, where we are currently a little bit to, to give, you know, perspective, as Darius mentioned, Poland right now in geographical diversification of our group is number one country. That means we're investing in Poland a lot of money, a lot of resources, a lot of plans for Poland, and it's led by a young woman. So I think that we're okay with that. We're not there yet where we probably want to be, as Darius mentioned, but we're getting that. And in terms of it's, you know, how it's working uh, as being female in mostly, I would say, male uh, companionship, I think it's, it, it, it is good. It is good because you get really perspective and quite diverse opinions and diverse decisions also, which essentially is a key uh, component and value for the company. Excellent. Uh, maybe I can add that um, um, business-wise, when, when you have only monopoly and, and quite a stable environment, um, there is a one uh, one situation that when when uh, the, the industry and, and the company has to innovate and is going through the transition, there is uh, the need for much higher business need for diversity because only diverse organization can innovate and can change and can evolve and still find a harmony in that change. Uh, so, so this is not kind of just we have the policy, but uh, um, actually when you really understand that this is a business driven change, when, when, when it really works. That's fantastic. It's like music to my ears, right? Uh, that's great to hear that from you. Um, and one question that I also have received is, um, in terms of the language, uh, what is your core language of the company? And do you hire people uh, that do not speak Lithuanian, Polish, uh, Estonian, or Finnish? Mm. So uh, we are in transition on this respect. <laughs> um, and just uh, yesterday, uh, two new members of supervisory board, they announced uh, one lady from Germany, another gentleman from Denmark, so we will have uh, uh, um, entirely English uh, as a core language in our supervisory board, and then it, it, it does uh, does does the work uh, downwards. 
currently in some areas we have bilingual in some areas we still we still quite heavily uh, Lithuanian based but it's changing quite rapidly especially with the growth of uh, uh, our um, uh, our non non Lithuanian operations in, in Poland and in, in other countries, we integrate more and more English English in in, in the entire in the entire group. Um, also, uh, sometimes even from small things, we have uh, um, regular uh, broadcasts to 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 entire group to to, to all employees and. Uh, I, I do not remember how many times we already made. We started from one day uh, to, to make a, a synchronous translation into English as well, just to, to, to make an ability to, to all, 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 all countries to participate and, and to be blind. So, so, so still a way to go, uh, but, but, but we are approaching uh, that level. Yes, it sounds like if you want to bring in a, a global talent into your company, it's uh, exactly things you have to consider. Exactly. Um, and the way actually the working environment is moving forward, uh, you can you you can be, you become a much more flexible to hire talent from outside of of existing areas you're physically based in. So we have two more questions, and I think we have uh, enough time. Uh, maybe we'll have another one come in in, in a minute. But uh, this question is really uh, probably more to you, Darius. It talks about um, uh, actually the cost of green energy. Mm -hmm. And is it actually more expensive than uh, traditional uh, energy from traditional sources? Um, this question comes from Angela Sinitskis again. Seems like coming from US. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so um, there is a um, 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 the concept concept of um, long term total cost of electricity. Uh, if if you take a different technologies and try to calculate total cost of producing um, electricity and then divide it down to one kilowatt hour and try to estimate uh, taking into account inflation etc what is the kind of synthetic price of kilowatt hour of wind capacity solar capacity nuclear um, coal and 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 other means of uh, energy Currently, it depends on the region, but already uh, renewables became cheapest source of uh, generation already. It's about three times cheaper comparing to the traditional uh, nuclear generation. Usually people um, 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 uh, do not take into account that uh, for nuclear generation, you have to um, uh, 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 take into uh, equation also uh, decommissioning costs because we cannot live for uh, uh, take advantage of uh, future generations. So, so if you take into account the commissioning costs of uh, nuclear facilities, and if you take into account um, the cost of CO two emissions. Um, in in, in uh, uh, fossil fuel generation already already uh, um, uh, uh, renewable uh, technologies are cheapest source of uh, of the production. In some areas, still there is a need to to make uh, some taxing on one side and uh, and 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 um, subsidies on another side because. Uh, externalities of uh, generation from fossil fuels. Usually, they are not. Uh, it, 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 they make a burden for the society, uh, but not. Uh, but without the taxes uh, um, uh, on the on the generation side, it's it's unfair situation um, um, to, towards the entire costs of the society. Therefore, in Europe, we have quite uh, efficient, and I really believe that that system will involve uh, the trade of uh, CO two allowances. Uh, which are right now traded across the uh, energy sector, and I really believe that uh, that will be ex the green deal will be expanded into uh, heavy industries as well, and sooner or later we will see uh, uh, carb carbon taxes uh, not only for electricity but also for steel, um, cement, and other uh, other other items 
so so uh, and that will make a big 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 change in in, in the entire ecosystem further on. But the answer is renewables are already cheaper, cheapest way of producing energy. It's certainly complex, right? Uh, it, it, it's a big change uh, in, on multiple levels, so you cannot really uh, look at it in a traditional way uh, when you're we're trying to estimate the costing. So there is uh, one question that was just sent over to me, um, and it is re related to the governance and board changes. So. Uh, uh, the question sounds like this. What corporate governance, uh, governance board changes does Ignitus expect as a result of the IPO? No, we do not expect uh, uh, any changes uh, due to IPO. Uh, the decision to expand the, the supervisory board from five to seven members was made before IPO. Just it took the time to, to do all the selection, uh, nomination, and, and uh, still those new members will be um, appointment um, in in um, in the general meeting, which is will be in November. So so uh, after that, we uh, we have quite quite strong corporate governance uh, uh, structure in place. Seven independent, uh, seven seven members of supervisory board. Uh, five out of seven are independent with independent chairman, and supervisory board is appointing. Uh, um, a management board and CEO and approving the strategies. So, so that that it, that's how it works. Excellent. So, final question, um, and hopefully it's an interesting one. It came from Indre Indre Indruneta, and she's asking, could you tell a bit more about the investment in energy tech side of your work through the Smart Energies Fund managed by Contrarian Ventures? How is this area of, of your work uh, supported from inside the group? Are these specific? Are there specific career opportunities in this area? Uh, I'm not sure about career opportunities, but probably yes, at least for some inter internship uh, for sure. But not not only in in in, the, in our uh, venture venture arm, but also we have inside uh, our group we have. Um, Innovation department, which is uh, working very closely with um, with our VC venture capital uh, corporate uh, CVC fund. Um, so uh, they need to have uh, innovation innovation group innovation department as well as uh, 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 venture capital fund was uh, not just earn money. Uh, uh, like uh, most of uh, VCs does, but for us it's a really strategic tool to to keep uh, to to know what is happening in the industry, because when you have VC fund, um, uh, you're working with pipelines of thousands of startups across the Europe, and 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 it, it works as a huge filter of. Uh, scanning new ideas and trends uh, uh, about the uh, current state of development of different um, energy and IT technologies and also possibilities to, to be in, in, in me meaningful uh, networks uh, um, of innovation, uh, what is happening right now. So we, so we are for, we are investing not only, of course, not only in Lithuanian startups, but uh, we have um, our investments in, um, in, in UK, France, in Israel, Norway, and, and other countries. And usually we are we, uh, right now already contrarian, um, managed to, 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 to got quite strong reputation of, of, of really professional fund, which has a very strong access to the very innovative utility. Because all these startups, they need to have some way a playground to, to, to test uh, new new technologies, and that helps us to to co-invest in um, in um, very interesting developments with uh, global leading uh, players. As an example, we have um, um, investment in Israel in in very innovative uh, you know, hydrogen, new, new technology of producing uh, uh, high, green hydrogen uh, together with Hyundai. And Hyundai is world leader in hydrogen uh, uh, technologies globally. Uh, we have um, another investment in UK 
um, smart um, battery uh, technology startup uh, to, together with Honda. Uh, and Honda, again, they, they, are, they are one of the leaders of, of, of distributing uh, storages um, and, and, and now moving that technology um, uh, into, into their car fleet. So, so therefore, that helps us to be very well connected to, to new innovations. Uh, fund is growing the value as well. It, it, we, we will see quite, quite a huge growth on, in value on, on that part as well. But for us, it's a really a um, um, uh, source of uh, competitive intelligence, actually. It's, uh, it's certainly a great way to test new ideas and keep on top of the new innovations that are coming in, uh, which sometimes if you do them uh, internally within large uh, companies, it's just uh, much more difficult to, to create that creative space. So uh, um, certainly I see a huge benefit there. There's one more question that has uh, just come in and it talks about the um, different ways of working, different forms of working, and especially now with the COVID time, um, you know, work from home, uh, work from another country. Uh, what is the Ignitis strategy? How do you see this? And do you think you will take this moving forward once the COVID goes away? So uh, the strategy is uh, to be uh, as flexible as possible. So uh, um, we, we really, we are very quite well prepared um, uh, just before first wave of COVID, um, um, we already had uh, quite uh, uh, quite uh, well established remote working um, procedures, um, uh, all tools, instruments, and and uh, and uh, all means what is needed to 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 work remotely, including digital signatures, document management systems, etc. So. Then uh, we, we, we went into first lockdown. We moved, uh, I think, about 1.7, so 1,700 something about that number of employees just in two days to work in, uh, from home. So it was the smoothest and fastest uh, transition <laughs> in, in, in Lithuania. Uh, uh, and uh, all commercial banks and others followed us in, 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 in about a week. So, so and 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 um, there was some specific areas when people have to be on place, like uh, um, I don't know, network monitoring and and and, and other jobs, or or to take care of an infrastructure. But. Uh, um, um, all this office work or office related work uh, do, during the lockdown, um, all people, um, they, they are working remotely. During the summertime, we uh, made our regulations that we don't push people artificially back to office offices, but we encourage to, to go to offices and meet because it, it, it takes some time to also to, 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 to meet each other and, and to, to create new new ideas, new innovations, and not to not to let uh, human uh, links to vanish. Uh, but uh, uh, during uh, all the summer and, and, and autumn, um, uh, probably something up to 80% or only people return returned to the working places on average, so something between 60 and 80. And right now we are organically are moving back um, uh, to, 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 to lower numbers um, in, in office. Um, uh, but we learned that um, we have to be flexible and to, to, to have uh, different uh, types of work uh, as normal in, in, in the company. Uh, we are uh, we are moving to new head office uh, next year, and right now quite busy on uh, um, uh, drafting uh, how how all infrastructure and working places will look like. Mm -hmm. So we we will definitely will have uh, some uh, flexible fla places as well as. Um, uh, other very innovative uh, solutions um, uh, around new office uh, and for sure yes a new uh, session right on, on how you've changed your office layout 
you know, yeah. and, and we had even a virtual hackathon on new new ways of working and new office and around uh, I don't know uh, around 200 of employees participated two day, two days so, so so that was huge attendance so it helps to to, to make some uh, quite meaningful inclusion as well that's fantastic Okay, so I think we have arrived to the end of the session. This has been really fascinating. I personally would like to thank both of you for really uh, in very interesting insights and your personal stories um, and also thank the audience. And with that, I would like to pass uh, the, the stage to Asha to complete uh, the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gintar. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Darius, and thank you, Diana. It was really interesting to listen, and uh, thank you to all the audience for all the great questions. And I especially would like to thank the London City Lithuanian uh, Lon London City Lithuanian Club. I'm sorry, it's always complicated. Uh, and uh, personally, to Gintare for taking on to moderate this uh, discussion. And I would like to remind that in uh, November 12th, we will have uh, another meet and greet session and uh, with Luminor Bank. And, uh, and I see that it's, I'm very glad that this, uh, our strategy to give more space for, uh, for uh, uh, questions and answers has approved uh, itself in this, during this session and we will continue doing so in our uh, further meet and greet events. So thank you very much to everybody. And uh, we will follow up by email with the recording of this event, also uh, with the details about the upcoming events. So stay tuned. <laughs>